Are you wondering what a good omega balance is? Or maybe you're not even sure what I'm talking about. Well, today I'm going to be talking all about balancing our omega 6s and our omega 3 so that we can really optimize our nutrition because we want our body to function the best that it can. And this omega balance affects us at a cellular level. So if you want to feel better, if you want to maximize your nutrition, maybe decrease some inflammation, some aches and pains, then you'll want to tune in so you can learn more about this Omega Balance. Hi friends, and welcome to the Healthy Beyond 40 show. I'm Michelle, mama of four, a military wife. I have my doctorate in physical therapy and I'm an online personal trainer, health coach, and yoga teacher. Do you wish that you had more energy and could get into shape? Do you feel like you're struggling to lose weight? Maybe you've tried a diet before, but it just wasn't sustainable, and now you don't know how to get started. We're gonna look at health holistically here, and most importantly, keep things simple and quick. If you're ready to develop healthier habits, exercise consistently, and lose weight sustainably without long workouts or following strict diets, then you're in the right place. In this podcast, I bring together my expertise with real life strategies. No magic pill here, so lace up those shoes and get moving. So just a disclaimer, before I get started today, Always talk with your doctor before supplementing, especially if you're on medications and when it comes to fish oil, especially if you are on any blood thinners. So let's dive in it today. So we're first going to learn about omega-6s. So generally, omega-6s are considered more inflammatory. So they're not necessarily bad, but if we have too much of them, then we have too much of them. And that's where we get more inflammation. So imagine when you're getting an injury. You want cells, you want inflammation at that part of your body to heal it. So imagine it's a cut in your skin. There's different types of cell that go to it to help heal that. So we want that inflammation. That's a good thing. So we can think of these omega-6s like an accelerator. So it's going there. It's doing what it needs to. But what happens is when we have too many of these, we keep hitting that gas. And that's where we get more and more inflammation. So there are four types of omega-6s. And I'm just going to give you guys the abbreviations here. So there's LA, GLA, AA, and DGLA. So imagine there's these different types of omega-6s. So generally, they are more inflammatory. The GLA tends to be one omega-6 that's a little bit of an exception and is a little bit more anti-inflammatory. So now let's move on to omega-3s. So generally, when we're thinking of omega-3s, we're thinking anti-inflammatory. So when we're thinking of that cut on our skin and those omega-6s are putting on the gas, they are helping to bring all this inflammation to the injury for it to heal. And then we can think of those omega-3s as putting on the brakes. Because when we don't have this, when we don't have enough of these omega-3s and we can't put on the brakes, we're having more inflammation, we're having more destruction to cells. And there's also a little bit more that goes into it. But what I want you guys to know is also that our brain is, I've seen different percents. So we'll just go with 50 to 60% of our brain is lipids. And about half of that is omega-3s. So you can tell that these omega-3s are really important in our brain. I was also reading that There's a lot of omega-3s in our cerebral cortex, and this is our higher functioning part of our brain where we're thinking, where we're making decisions. So we want to have enough omega-3s for our brain and this higher part of our brain to work well. So when we're looking at these omega-3s and omega-6s, we sort of want that Goldilocks zone of inflammation. So obviously when something happens, we need some inflammation, but we just don't want too much which is the state that most of us are in, having too much inflammation. So omega-3s, there are four types. So the first one is ALA, and this comes from seeds, nuts, and avocado. So this is more of a plant-based, but the rest of the omega-3s, we have EPA, DHA, DPA, and some of you guys probably have heard of EPA and DHA before. These all come from marine sources. So it has to come from a marine source. So it can be that seaweed or that's how the fish get their omega-3 content. So this is why a lot of the times, you know, when we talk about fish oil, we're talking about omega-3. It is because the fish oil contains a very good source of omega-3s. 
So along with our omega-3s, we really need phytonutrients and phyto means plants. So we really need these other plant nutrients to really get the maximum amount out of our omega-3s. And I also want you to keep in mind that we can't fix this ratio just by decreasing omega-6s. And soon I'll share my ratios. And it's not like my omega-6s were that high. Some of them were a little high. But what needs to happen is that we need to increase our omega-3. So we can't just decrease omega-6 and think that this ratio is going to be fixed. We really have to increase our omega-3s. So to put it in a little context, I was watching a video by Dr. Eric Berg, and he talked about different ratios in our food. So as I say these ratios, the first number is going to be the omega-6. The second number is going to be omega-3. So in a lot of seed oils, canola oil, oil, soybean oil, all of those, the ratio is 70 to 1. So 70 omega-6s to 1 omega-3s. So these are definitely a big source of problem in our country and in our nutrition. Potato chips are 60 to 1. Grains are typically 20 to 1. And then this gets interesting too. Beef is 9 to 1, but grass-fed beef is 2 to 1. And that's because our conventional meat is being fed different types of grain. So the grass-fed beef is going to have a lower ratio. So when you're hearing things about grass-fed beef, or I'll do pasture eggs next, this is why. So next is, I was shocked with this one, commercial eggs 29 to 1, and pasture raised eggs 3 to 1. So huge difference in the amount of omegas that are there. Leafy greens are 1 to 1, fish is 1 to 1. So I just wanted to give a little context because what we are eating makes a huge difference. So we really want to make sure that we are fueling our body well and knowing what we're putting into our body. And if you guys know me here, it's always a step-by-step process. Don't listen to this and think that you have to change everything. One step at a time is what's going to get you there because it can be overwhelming, but we can do it in a more step-by-step process so it's not overwhelming and so that we actually stick to it. So what ratio do we want? So most science is pointing towards three to one. So remember that first number is omega-6. So about three omega-6s to one omega-3. So if you're thinking back at some of those foods I mentioned, those seeds oil that are 71, I mean, off the charts, potato chips, 60 to one, it's a big difference. So I have also seen some people even say a ratio of two to one, one to one, Generally, science is three to one, but I also have noticed that sometimes doctors, and I guess it's not doctors, but our public health system start to lower what's normal, start to change levels of things because it's starting to become more and more normal in our culture, even though it's not for optimum health. So an example of this is like early puberty that is happening in girls. It has now become the new normal for it to happen at a younger age, and that's just because that's what's happening in our society that doesn't mean that's what should be for optimal health. So we definitely want to make that goal ratio three to one. So now let me tell you a little bit about my test results. So keep in mind, I was not really eating fish, like maybe once a month. I don't even think it was that month. And then I hadn't been supplementing in a long time. I have in the past done cod liver oil, But it had really been a long time, like I'm thinking longer than a year or two. I was also eating very little processed food. So I was thinking like, oh, my ratio won't be that bad. Like I'm really not doing many seed oils and potato chips and some of those foods. Well, guess what? My ratio was 37 to 1. So very far from optimal. Um, I was shocked. But one thing I also noticed is so when we are pregnant, So I think when I was pregnant, I was taking some supplements, learning what I know now, probably not enough and probably not a good enough quality of one. So if you don't have enough of these omega-3s, the baby will pull it from your brain. So I noticed, especially after my fourth kid, when I was pregnant with him, my chin started to get rough. And then also it's like underneath my chin and my forehead a little bit. It's not something you can see, but it's something I can feel. It's almost like a sandpaper feeling. And this can also potentially be from not having enough omegas in our body. And since I have started supplementing, I have noticed a difference. It's not 100% gone yet, 
but this is the only thing that has started to make a difference in it. So specifically in my omega-6s, these percents are going to be at a percent of deviation from the norm. So zero is like you're right on track. So if the percent is going higher, that's how far you are deviating that your number is higher. If the percent goes negative, that's sort of saying how low you are from that zero percent that we want. So my GLA was zero percent, so it was right on track. My AA was 8%, so it was just a tiny bit above. And then my DGLA was 25%, and my LA was 32%. So we can tell some of those were a little high. So some of these not only come from seed oils, but they also come from chicken can be another source of higher omega-6s too. So I'm guessing that's where some of my numbers were coming a little bit higher from. Now, omega-3s, So my ALA was 0% and was right on normal. And if you remember, ALA is the one that comes from plants. So seeds, nuts, avocados. So that was right on track for me. But the marine sources were so, so low. So my EPA was negative 91%. So that is how low it was. DPA was negative 45% and DHA is negative 55%. So you can see that these sources these parts of the omega threes are really low. So this is where my ratio of that 37 to one is getting so off. And I encourage you to test your levels and then retest them. So I don't know why doctors don't always recommend this. At different points, I've had low vitamin D and low cholesterol and the doctors will show me that. And I've had to ask like, can I retest in three or four months? Because I want to know if what I'm supplementing or what I'm changing is making a difference. So it's really important to retest so then you can sort of recalibrate and readjust if you need to. So there's going to be a link in the description where you guys can get your levels tested. And if you buy the kit, it comes with two tests so that you can do this. So you can test, start supplementing, and then retest in, I think it's four months. I have waited a little bit longer because I wasn't super great about taking my fish oil. But I encourage you that if you are, it needs to be a daily thing and you need to be taking the right dose to see the changes and see those changes enough. So follow that link in the description if you want to test your levels to make sure that you have the nutrients that your body needs because this affects all different cells in our body. The next thing I want to touch on real quick is polyphenols. Because like I talked in the episode, two episodes ago, is we want to make sure that when we're eating our fish oil that it's not oxidized. And what polyphenols do is they help prevent the oxidation. So polyphenols are classic compounds that are found in many plant foods. And you might have heard some. There's over 8,000 different types. And this is also why in general, eating more whole foods, plant foods, green vegetables, you're going to get so many more nutrients than just the certain vitamin and minerals that we know of. So for example, there is something called EGCG in green tea. If you have heard of red wine and grapes and resveratrol, um, and also flavonoids like quercetin, I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, is also another polyphenol. And there's so many more. There are some in chili peppers, But knowing that these polyphenols work as an antioxidant in the body, meaning they help protect us against that oxidative stress that can happen. So it's super important to have these. It also helps having them in your fish oil so that you can absorb the nutrients in the fish oil more. So it allows our body to absorb it, absorb it, and make it more usable. So the fish oil that I have been using contains a high amount of polyphenols that they add to it. And their polyphenols come from a special type of olive oil. And they do this so that the product isn't oxidized. That's why you're not going to get that fishy burp, the fishy smells with it, because it hasn't oxidized. It hasn't gone rancid. So I encourage you, if you want, you can check that out down below. There's going to be a link in the description. I really recommend buying the kit. So that means You're going to get those two tests so you can test and then retest later. And you're also going to get your first bottle of oil to get started. And we want to retest because sometimes maybe our level isn't going up enough. And maybe that's because we haven't taken it consistently. Maybe we're not taking a high enough 
high enough dose, or maybe we're also not absorbing fats. So we want to retest and see where we're at and see if we need to make any changes or if we're right on track. And I also wanted to let you guys know when you order through my links, you're going to get a free health coaching call. And this is so that you can help make the lifestyle changes so you can understand your test so you can really understand your health because the worst thing is is not having support. So the first time I had high cholesterol was after my daughter. So that was, I don't know, 16 years ago. And the doctor just gave me a PDF. And I'm like, what? Like I was doing most of the things anyways, but I felt so lost. So I think it's super important to be able to have someone to talk to, have someone to answer your questions and have someone giving you support, giving you suggestions and helping you to really live that healthy lifestyle. So check the description down below to find out what you want, and then you'll get to set up a free call with me. And real quick, I just want to talk about some food changes that you can make too, especially to help lower that omega-6s. So one is replace your salad dressing with olive oil. So if you look at the labels, most salad dressings in the store are usually soybean oil-based or canola oil. Also, this is another reason that we don't want fried foods because typically they are using these plant oils that have a really high amount of omega-6s. Also, making sure that your meats are grass-fed is going to help, and you might also want to look at your chicken and how much chicken you are eating. And some good things to help is having fatty fish two times a week. You want to look and make sure that you are getting a type of fish that is not high in mercury and some of the other toxins that are there. Walnuts also are good for ALA, and that helps to convert to, that's part of our omega-3. So I had some questions in my Facebook group about fish oil, so I'm going to answer these. So one is, can you take it on an empty stomach? So it is best to take fish oil with meals because this is going to allow for better absorption. Morning or night, the time of the day doesn't really matter, but you're going to get better absorption if you're eating it with a meal. Because think when we're eating fish, we're eating it with all different types of things. And generally, not always, when we have a food... We're eating it with different vitamins and minerals. So sometimes these nutrients actually work better together. So number two is, can you take fish oil with magnesium? So generally, this is safe. The one thing I found is that, so fish oil can lower your triglyceride levels, which is part of your cholesterol. And also they think that magnesium could potentially lower blood pressure, but the National Institute of Health said this is very small. So I don't think this is a real concern, but listen to your body, check with your doctor about it. And on the other side, some sources are saying that they are better together. So I personally take fish oil and I usually take a magnesium supplement sometimes before bed. I also take a multivitamin that has it. I haven't noticed any problems, but that is just my body. So that could be a great question to ask your doctor. And the other one was what about with B12? So I didn't find anything against this. There's some research that's actually showing they might be good together because it can help with cognitive deficits and neurobehavioral disorders. So I hope that this episode was helpful to you. I hope you guys are understanding a little bit more about omega-3s and omega-6s, where they are in our diets, and how we can get more omega-3s into our diet. All right. Hope you guys have a good week and keep on moving.